Hey guys, what's up? This is Josh from CME up in the Acoustic Room, and we're here with Vision Video. Uh, they just did a show down here. It sounded awesome. And so, yeah, we're just going to ask a couple questions, get to know you. Um, first and foremost, as you are in Chicago Music Exchange, can you, are you able to kind of give us a little rundown of your gear um, or just a couple pieces and what you're using? Yeah, so... Um my name is Dusty. Um, I am the guitarist and uh, co-vocalist of Vision Video. Um, I play a variety of guitars. I like to stick to um, Jags, Fender Jags mostly. Uh, I like the versatility. The fretboards are really easy to sweep across, and I'm not like much of a shredder. I'm more of a rhythm guitar player, but um, the necks have always felt really, really nice. Um, but I've also been playing on this tour a lot on my Jazzmaster and uh, I've really fallen in love with it. It's such an easy guitar to play, um, and it's just got this like really warm, beautiful resonance that I have uh, leaned into. I use a lot of like really shimmery effect pedals. Um, my favorite pedal that I'm currently using that, that kind of is one of the signatures of my sound as a guitarist is the Matthews Effects Astronomer. It's, I guess, technically a delay, simulated delay pedal, but it has this like beautiful shimmery synth uh, undercurrent that like carries off in the tail mm. and uh, it really it just has this like beautiful kind of nostalgic feel to it um, but uh, on the more aggressive songs I have my uh, boss like overdrive you know it's just tried and true and uh, for a really good reverb I use um, my Earthquaker uh, Ghost Echo which I love uh, and then uh, for amps I'm pretty much always I'm super in love with the AC30 Vox. The spring reverb on board is awesome. Uh, and being a sort of post-punk goth pop band, you know, we are drenched in perpetual waves of reverb. reverb. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, 
general rundown. What about you, Emily? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't do this. Okay, so I'm, like, very new to playing synth and keyboard. I've pretty much only ever played, like, classical piano. Um, but Dustin and our um, original bass player, Dan, got me a Juno DS5, which everyone, like, always comes up to me and they're like, oh, my God, that's such a cool synth. Like, how much do you love it? And I'm like... I like it, you know. <laughs> I wish that I knew more about it. This summer I'm going to spend a lot more time like getting into it and like learning. Like there's so much like in that synth that I can do, but pretty much right now I just like have been pushing buttons and then saving the patches that I like. Um but it's got like the all black keys, which is like super rare, I guess. That was like an accident. We got it on eBay or something and they just like so happened to send it to the goth band, so that was cool. <laughs> Made sense. Do you have any I mean, I'm, I'm probably, I'm not really that much of a gearhead. I, I pretty much play the same drum kit I bought 15 years ago. It's a Pacific. I got it at Dr. Collect's thrift store in Lake Worth, Florida, and it's been good to me. Today I borrowed a Ludwig. It sounds good. I might have to upgrade or side grade. I don't know if it's better than my kit, but it sounded really good. I know where you can and get one. Yeah. You know where I can get one? <laughs> I'm playing bass in this band. I think I'm very, it's absolutely simple, simple, simple. Partnering with Jason on the drums. He's such a great drummer. I just like to just bang it out. I've got a, it's a Hagstrom FXB 200 bass. It's, I mean, it's basically just a precision with spikier horns on it. So gothic horns, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, but it's you know with a badass bridge on there. So the sustain is amazing out of that thing. And then just a, a Ampeg SVT style amp, and I'm happy. I'll just bang it out. Very simple, simple. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I love playing with you too. So. <laughs>
Can you talk to me a little bit briefly about influences, stuff that you're listening to or that you, you used to listen to or what's kind of hitting you right now? I think the influences that are most directly apparent for me uh, and, and, and for the band as, as a whole um, are like the Chameleons. Um, I think Mark Burgess is like one of the most underrated musicians of all time. Hmm. Like both as a uh, bass player, a songwriter, and a lyricist, uh, they are just one of those sort of hidden gems um, and they're just one of the most incredible post-punk bands uh, ever. Uh, but obviously The Cure, like Robert Smith uh, as a guitarist, uh, really, really, really influenced me heavily. A lot on gear, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a big like jazz master guy. I mean, he plays a lot of guitars, but uh, and he plays the Vox. And, you know, um, uh, I just love his uh, sense of like very dissonant progression. He, he has these like very beautiful lovely intertwining progressions uh where he does leads and i'm i'm just like always in all of it um but you know like for when jason and i first got together like we really were uh were huge replacements fans and nice. i think that comes through in a lot of the music like especially jason's drumming is like such he's like such a powerhouse drummer and the replacements had just such a raw like real sound and a lot of it is through the rhythm section of that band uh so yeah i think those are all pretty pretty solid identifiers of our sound yeah. um yeah at least for me so my original influence to like even want to be in a band was definitely Haley williams <laughs> when i was uh in like sixth or seventh grade i think all we know was falling came out and that was their first album and it was like i was raised in a very um, like religious household and so that was like kind of like the furthest away from that type of music I was allowed to get and I heard it and I was just like blown away like mm. and Haley Williams in general is like such an incredible performer and lyricist and like her vocals and she's just like this powerhouse of a woman so after hearing that like it was always my dream to just like be in a band and like try and like figure out like my own sound and like where I could take it um, and so luckily like I've been able to do that and like she's kind of always been like on my mind, like when I started figuring out like my stage performance and not to like completely like mimic her, but just like her energy and um, like getting more comfortable with like my movements and just like the power that I could possibly have in my voice. Um, and something that the boys have been telling me too is um, Susie and the Banshees. Susie Sue is like another like strong female vocalist that like I'm trying to <laughs> draw inspiration from and just like, you know, gain confidence with. Um, yeah, so those are my two.
touched on it a little bit when you were breaking down the guitars, but um, it's a two-parter. If you can kind of hit me on the songwriting process and just what does that look like for you? And also, how does your gear uh, influence that, if it does? Our songwriting process for this band is a lot of me at home in my sort of home studio that I've built. Um, and it's And it's a lot of just like complete experimentation with sound. And I really believe that um, as a musician and as a band, like it doesn't really matter like how amazing your lyrics are or the message of your song or like whatever it is you're trying to get across with the music. Um, if this, if the sound isn't right of the instrumentation and, and the sonically, if it's not pleasing, then I, you know, I don't know that I can convey what I'm trying to say in my songs. And that's a very important aspect for me as a musician. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of experimentation with just noise and, you know, trying different chord structures and progressions and shapes. And, you know, um, I'm getting a lot more into technical learning of guitar and a little bit more theory and stuff like that. Uh, but typically I'll, you know, I'll come up with a riff and, uh, build off of that and just have like a drum machine beat in the background that kind of, I can build the, the skeletal structure of a song Sometimes I work with Emily uh, to, to work on those ideas and then we just bring it to the band and everybody sort of builds and, and flourishes and that's when it really becomes its own song. And then we all have like a very active part in the editing process. But then the lyrics uh, are, are things that I, you know, pull from my experiences in my life and, and, and that's, you know, genuinely the, the most difficult part of it but also the most fulfilling because to me it's the whole point of it is the artistry of the message. Uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I take a lot of pleasure in the, the sonic element in and of itself, but uh, to, to be able to communicate really complicated emotions or, you know, even like complex societal issues or something through a song is like, that's my biggest interest in music is that it, you can convey that through this three minute segment of m the movement of air. And I think that's like one of the most beautifully human things that we can do. It's pretty magical. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, really glad you guys came by. Um, thanks for sitting down and talking with us. And in terms of being in Chicago, anything that you're looking to looking forward to trying, eating, drinking, seeing, not Malort. <laughs> 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 There's a restaurant, I don't know if it's still up there, on like Lawrence or Sheridan called Taste of Lebanon. Do you know that place? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must I, do. I remember yeah. that was one of my favorite places. I might try to wander up there. Yeah. Um, also, we went to Three Dots and a Dash. We love oh, tiki bars. Um, that's kind of like something that we try to find whenever we have time off. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, I'd like to go back there, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a... I'm, I'm a huge tiki bar <laughs> freak. We're all like pretty food driven people, <laughs> especially Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's just nice to be here. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks, guys. Good to meet you all. Yeah, thank you. And enjoy yeah, the rest of the Thanks for having us. Of course. Absolutely.